So how this works is firstly, we have data, right? Let's say we have this 10 rows of data. As I told you, we have temperature and wind speed and uh, what was the condition on that particular date, right? So we divide this data randomly into rows, right? So let's say there were 10 rows. We randomly select five rows. And that has input as well as the output in case of regression, because we are studying regression, it has both output and input. So using feature engineering, we select, right? So select logically, because there are some questions where we predict that, uh, that uh, okay, the student will get admission or not, right? So they have given in that question, first name, last name, age, and education of that, uh, that person, right? So first name and last name, logically, if you think it cannot affect, right? Like people don't decide that what is your name and then they will give you maybe loan for higher education or visa, but age could be a factor, right? And education could be a factor that maybe they want to give visa only to those people who are such and such qualified, right? So these could act as the features, right? That these are the deciding factors, right? So you select the columns in a table, right? That is the first thing. And then you divide the data randomly. And when you divide the data, then what you use is some data you use to train the model. Okay. And the rest of the data you use to evaluate the model. So training means uh, you will preparing your output, preparing an algorithm, which will return output. Then you have the rent, the pending data. You will check that whether that data is returning good output or that is matching or not, right? So we split the data, right? But we select the column first, like I told you here, what columns have to be done. Then we split the data. We use an algorithm, right? We, we then evaluate that, right? And then we see the differences. And also these are the three matrix uh, that they have shown, right? Because as I told, as I showed you that graph, it might not uh, return you accurate output, right? There would, there could be differences, right? So I'll show you this on their actual site. Uh, what are the three things they have shown? So here they have shown that, right? The graph that I showed you, which was having some differences. So they have noted down the differences and they found the mean of that is 2.33. Okay. Better than mean is mean squared error, where they take the square of everything, like they double it, three, three is a nine, and again, all this, and then the number comes six, and then they root it. Then they got the data 2.45. So this one, they uh, they treated better than the one uh, which was coming earlier, right? And even they use this formula, right? So these are just things that theoretically you can know, uh, and there is no question of evaluating this, but it's just that, to come to the accuracy of it, they use all these various uh, formulas, okay? So in all the various things, they have told that what machine learning things that Microsoft is offering. So there is something called as automated machine learning, right? So in that automatically models are there, you can select a particular model, right? It cannot infer automatically, right? You have to do some basics, right? But the model is already prepared, right? And they have a software called as designer for all of it, right? Azure language designer, speech designer. So it's like, uh, so that you can get no code development. You can just drag and drop, select things and do the stuff, right? And you can do data matrix uh, valuation is there, right? There are some questions where they ask you that, what is the language that can be used? So you can use only R and Python. JavaScript and Scala are not allowed, right? If you want to write some custom code, you can write in Jupyter Notebook. Those who are using Python, they would be aware about this. They can write code in this. Okay, so how the uh, training happens is, as I told you earlier as well, right? We select the feature, we select an algorithm, right? And we evaluate the model, right? And uh, now comes the other one right here. Uh, we are talking about classification. Okay, in classification, as we uh, read earlier that, it generally returns two kind of output, right? That whether somebody will get a, will have diabetes or they will not have diabetes. So the answer is zero or one. There is nothing in between, right? So to prepare that, if you know that uh, that if you have x and y, you can create total four combination x x x y, right? Y y y x. So that they called is as confusion matrix. So generally there is a, a question that I saw in about that also where we talked about this uh, confusion matrix 
Okay, and then comes the multi-class class multi-class classification. What happens is either you create a single algorithm uh, to predict everything, or uh, you create multiple for multiple things. Okay, so let's say that there are three varieties of penguins, right? Here the example has given. So one thing is you can create three different function: one, two, three. Okay. So what will happen is for a particular you will call this for another you call this or you create just one function and you call that and you get that which penguin it is okay and uh, so so either you can create one function and pass a vector kind of multiple inputs and it can decide what is the output or you can just pass one and uh, decide that right and then comes the last one clustering so these are the detailed uh, examples that uh, they have given so in this we are not uh, identifying flowers we will group them okay and on we tell that okay in y axis number of leaves number of petals pick but we don't know the output of this there is a very good diagram of this uh, that i can show you that is there on the microsoft site so in this diagram they have explained how clustering works so here you don't know the output so you take this uh, centroid point and then what happens is that this points keep on moving coming closer and you will find the center of it so if you see here it's there then they found what is nearest they classified this they again change that what is nearer right so finally this kind of place come where they put the common things together so that is the way how clustering works compared to other algorithms so this I have tried to explain here, right? So we decide the number of clusters. In that example, you saw three were there, right? And we had the centroid and it was keep on moving based on what was there near it, right? So centroid moved to the center of data points. So those flowers were the data points. So it moves to the center, right? And when this will move here, so it can affect the other things which are near it, right? So that way we reach to a point where the different centroids are created, right? We had this different kind of diagram. So then we told that, okay, this is one category, this is another category, and this is the maybe the third category. So that's what uh, clustering is about.